All right, in this video, I'm going to take a look at, um, at multiple markets, kind of a, an overview of where everything is at, in my opinion. So to start off with, I'll, I'll look at the stocks. <clears throat> um, clearly, we've got an intermediate cycle low here. Uh, you know, I got people long back in here. So we're, we're making good money off this run. It's still very early in this intermediate cycle. It's only week four. Um, now we, we have, we have had four weeks in a row up. Uh, we've got an FOMC meeting uh, and decision on Wednesday. They'll uh, probably decide whether or not they're going to start tapering in November or hold off till December. That, that was likely to influence the currency markets. Uh, I don't think it'll have much effect on stocks, but that, that meeting uh, could be a trigger event for stocks to take a break. Uh, and as you can see here, we, we've got a break out above this all time high on the NASDAQ. And, and again, I'll say that I think the bubble is going to be in the NASDAQ in the tech stocks, probably the FANG stocks. They've been leading this uh, bull market for the last decade. I would expect the, the uh, bubble phase to uh, present in those uh, stocks mostly. So, so tech is where I'm looking for the bubble. We've, uh, we've completed an intermediate degree correction and now we've broken out to all time highs, but we're, you know, we've got four weeks in a row. So the FOMC meeting could be a, a trigger to, to get some sideways consolidation here. Now I'm going to, I'm going to say if we don't get that, if this just makes a beeline to 16,000, uh, this coming week, then we've probably started the uh, the parabolic melt up phase uh, of this bull market. If we, you know, if we, if we turn sideways and kind of back and forth um, above and below this uh, breakout line, then um, maybe that that true parabolic melt up phase is is still pushed out a little further. Maybe maybe we're still in more of a normal market and normal advance. But if if we go straight to 16,000 this week, then I, I think the bubble is on. And, and, uh, as I said, you know, we got long back in here, so we're, we're set up, you know, we're in and we're prepared to, well, we're already making money off this, but I, we're prepared for, to, to ride the bubble phase if it's ready to ignite. So that, that's what I'm watching for in stocks. All right. Moving on to energy. Um, I've shown this chart before. We've got multiple resistance zones here. Um, 84 was one. I, I wasn't sure that that was going to stop this rally. Um, my thought was that probably uh, we would get a daily cycle top right here at about 86. Uh, with the you know, lower possibility that we go through 86 and get to 91 before the daily cycle tops. Looks to me like we, we're probably trying to uh, put in a daily cycle top right here at this resistance at 86. So let me convert to the daily chart. All right. So um, when we came, you know, within a hair's breadth here uh, last week, this is where I suggested um, taking, well, we, we started to take profits at 84. So I suggested selling half of, of energy positions at 84, just in case that, that uh, turned price back down. And then selling another half of what was left here at, at 86. So um, basically, we've we've taken most of our profits from this run. So again, we we've made some really good money in energy uh, on a strong trending move. And now um, it kind of it, it's up in the air here. It, if uh, oil just comes up and and breaks out, makes a new high, then this. That may be all we're going to get for a daily cycle low. The market is just too strong. The shortages are are um, building, and it, and we just may not be able to get a, a very deep correction down into a daily cycle low. So I'm prepared to to give the call to go back into full positions if we break out above this this high. But as as of right now, I'm I'm still looking for a little bit lower. Um, low before I'm, I want to try and call this daily cycle low. E either way, though, once a daily cycle correction is over, we're, we're going to come up and make higher highs. This is only the first daily cycle uh, of an uh, intermediate rally. And uh, 
we should we should still have anywhere from five to ten more weeks to go uh, before this intermediate rally top. So I think we're probably going to get to 91 and maybe a hundred dollars before this intermediate cycle tops. But we're we're trying to complete a, a little corrective move here, and it's just up in the air as to whether this is all we're going to get. All right, now let's look at the currencies, and this um, has some implications for gold. So um, it's a bit confusing, and as I've said many times in the past, the currencies are the most heavily manipulated markets on the planet, so cycles don't work great in the currencies, um, but it's really the cycles and sentiment, either one, don't work very good. So, But, you know, for lack of anything better, I still use them and to the point to where, um, and, you know, until I just have to accept that it's not going to work in this particular instance. But so for right now, clearly, we've got an intermediate rally in progress. We've got a move down into a daily cycle low in progress. And it looks to me like the, the daily cycle low probably bottomed right here. So we're starting a new daily cycle. Um, and then when I go over to the euro, you're going to see the, the problem here. So I'm guessing um, during this phase, the market was, was thinking that the Fed was, uh, or the market was anticipating the Fed was going to hold off on um, tapering until December. So the, the market was trying to price that in. Um, on Friday, I think the market may, you know, maybe there's some inside information that, that the Fed is going to taper is going to start tapering in November. And so the, the market quickly had to, to reprice that in and that this, this may be uh, the start of another daily cycle. And even if a daily cycle is going to left translate, it usually doesn't do it in like two or three days. It'll, a left translated cycle will usually rally eight to 12 days before uh, rolling over. But again, like I said, cycles aren't very dependable in the currencies. Um, I think it's just going to depend on whether on what the Fed says. If they're determined to taper in, in November, then we're probably going to get a rally. If um, if they um, push it out to December, uh, then I'd, I'd say at some point this is going to um, top and left turns late and roll over and give us an intermediate decline into that December um, tapering. So it'll it'll um, um, you know, start, start to anticipate the taper um, and, and going down until the Fed actually um, follows through and pulls the trigger. So this, this could go either way. But now let me look at the euro because this is where things get a bit interesting. All right. So um, th this is clearly a daily cycle low. And... There is now there is risk that this daily cycle is rolling over and, and about to left translate and produce a failed cycle. Um, it's it's very early, so you know using standard cycle analysis, if this um, moves below this and confirms a left translated cycle, the expectation is is that we've got a lot of weeks still to move down. Not in a straight line, of course. There'll, there'll be bounces along the way, but but um, the risk is is that this daily cycle is about to left translate and start moving down again. And I could kind of make a case that that this is an intermediate cycle low, as it uh, broke this intermediate trend line here. The rally did didn't didn't rally very much, but um, occasionally you will get these very short uh, intermediate rallies that then left translate to an extreme degree and then we get a you know a, a very um, nasty and drawn out move lower this is kind of what happened to gold in uh, what was it uh, 2011 when we got an extreme left translated um, intermediate cycle that uh, opened the door to the bear market so i like i like i said i could kind of make a case that maybe this is an intermediate degree rally that left translated to an extreme degree. The first daily cycle failed, moved below this um, daily cycle low. Uh, 
And now we've got um, another daily cycle that's trying to rally, but it is on the verge of rolling over and left translating again, which is exactly what you would expect if this is a left translating intermediate cycle. You would expect this second daily cycle to also left translate and produce a lower low. So, you know, continuing the stair stepping down process. And here's the, the problem. If the euro um, confirms a left translated daily cycle here, then and it and then it, it requires um, you know maybe out to December, maybe out to the December FOMC meeting um, before uh, it, this daily cycle bottoms, it's going to cause the dollar to rally because the dollar moves inversely to the euro. So if the euro left translates this daily cycle, it, it's going to mean that the dollar is going to rally for as long as it takes this euro cycle to bottom. Uh, and in that case, it's going to put pressure on gold. So now let's move over to gold. All right, so here's the gold chart. I've gone over this many times. You know, every, every time gold tries to rally above the 200-day moving average, it's not long before there's a tack that, that drives it back below it. So it, it did it again here. My suggestion was to for um, traders to take profits. Any, you know, as soon as gold closed back below the 200-day moving average, take profits. You can always put the long positions back on if gold recovers the 200-day moving average, but but protect yourself because it it looks to me like the um, gold is probably moving down into uh, a daily cycle low here, and it's even more um, apparent on the mining chart. So a big warning sign here: um, the the attack on Friday. You know, it, it painted the weekly charts, it uh, drove gold back below the 200 day moving average, and it broke this cycle up trend line. So, um, there's a pretty good chance that gold is now starting to move down into it into a daily cycle low. So, like I said, take profits on any position, long positions you have right here, take profits and get on the sideline and, and wait and see if gold can recover that 200 day moving average. If it does, you can always put your positions back on. And then uh, here's the um, chart of the miners. Uh, and this, this does not look terribly bullish to me. I know gold bugs don't want to hear this. They, they tend to be, you know, a, a one asset only traders. And when the, they're, and preferred market gold isn't doing what they they want it to do they're um, up, upset uh, and you know for whatever reason i i have trouble getting these people to trade um where the bull market is at you know that we're, we're making tons of money in energy and stocks and have been for months but but gold bugs uh, will refuse to to trade those markets they they want to fight with a market that is, you know, not only heavily manipulated, but in a downtrend, you know, it's making lower intermediate lows. It is not making higher intermediate highs. So it's still in a downtrend and there's nothing here yet that would convince me that 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 has reversed. And here's here's a big problem. The miners come up, came up, tested the sharply declining 200 day moving average and were rejected soundly. Now, if, if this was a mild pullback, then I would say probably we're just you know catching our breath and then we're going to set up for another attempt that will recover this 200 day moving average but that doesn't really look like what is happening here this looks like a complete rejection from the 200 day moving average and the beginning of a move down and, and like i said i think gold is probably moving down into a daily cycle low which means that this probably has further to fall this is a major support zone it's um, the miners are at risk of breaking it again. So it looks to me like we, we've got, you know, a, a rally out of this intermediate cycle low. It's failed to recover the 200 day moving average and is heading back down again. Uh, presumably it's going to make a lower low here. So again, my suggestion, you know, take profits on your positions. If you got in down here at the bottom, um, which we did in silver and, and uh, my suggestion would um, recommendation would hold for silver too. You know, take take your profits. If if you got in at the bottom of this rally, and, and then when gold closed below the 200-day moving average, lock up your profit. You got some profit, and then 
You can wait and see what happens. Like I said, if gold can recover the 200, you can always put it back on. But right now, this looks like a, a move down into a daily cycle low is starting, and I doubt that it's going to be over in you know just one or two days. So, um, best to be on the sideline. And then, real quickly, just a quick look at Bitcoin. Um, so, you know, disclaimer, first off, Bitcoin's not really my thing. Um, I, you know, I, I warned people when we got up here, the market was stretched way too far above the 200-day uh, moving average. And, and many people just kept holding on. Then they take a 50% drawdown on their position. And, and now, you know, we're rallying. My thought was that, that likely Bitcoin was making a double top. So the logical thing to do is to sell uh, when, you know, when we came up to test or break this this top right here, sell, get on the sidelines, and then it's like the, you just use the same strategy as as gold. If uh, you know if um, price comes back down, breaks the 200-day moving average, and clearly uh, starts down into a bear market, well, then you sold at the exact top. If price recovers and and breaks out to a no, new high, then then you get back in and, and you keep riding the the trade and you know maybe you miss you know a percent or two in here while you're waiting to see what happens but but it it, it makes uh, it made no sense to not lock up profits here if you especially if you had to hold on through this entire uh, fiasco here and recovery you know you, you got to take profits right here and then get on the sidelines and wait and see what happens and uh, you know if if it turns and goes back down then you got out the exact top if it recovers you get back in and and ride it until you've made enough money and you um you know you're happy and you you sell and you take your profits and you go look for something else to buy but uh i would would not be continuing to hold right here i this is a wait and see mode in my opinion see uh, see what plays out